guys right then back at you like Cleopatra well whatever <laughs> hope you're good it's Monday it's bloody freezing hence why I'm wearing a hoodie in the house no it's not because I am a youth or a youth and go around beating up old ladies and mugging old granddads no I am just cold and I wear hoodies at times so it's Monday We've just gotten through Storm Sierra. Yeah, yeah, over here in the UK. I mean, me and the missus were looking out yesterday. It's a bit windy and absolutely peeing down. You'll see, they've seen the video on my channel of what I recorded, absolutely pissing down. <laughs> um, we've seen it like, oh my god, it's so bad. It's like, aim, like the missus, aim. You do realise, like in America and other countries, like worse than America. They have tornadoes <laughs> and earthquakes and hurricanes and the lot. We've got a bit of wind. Oh, we really didn't have it bad at all. But to us, it was like, whoa, that was so bad. Um, so we got through that. We had power cuts in England, in the UK. We had a BBC went off the air. Wow, that's an amazing achievement. Well done, Storm Ciara. You took a crap channel off the air. Even the British uh, TV, even the British TV license pays like us can't make that happen, and they did. So well done, but they did. Storm Sierra did. Right, I need to lift this camera up a bit, guys. Let me sort this out. Bear with. That's better. I'm literally using anything I can get my hands on at the minute to <laughs> lift this camera up. So we are currently using a mirror, the, the wife's mirror. A box with some cards in which I'm going to use one of the days on the video and a pack of wipes to lift up the stand with the camera on. We're very um, authentic here and we like to improvise a lot. Right then, so I'm going to get into the video now. Today's video is like part one of however many sort of I decide to do basically. A lot of you have said in the past that you enjoy my rambles and you want to hear more stories but unfortunately I don't make stories every day something amazing doesn't happen to me every day like every other day yeah but not every day so I've had to brainstorm like get into my brain and go whoa I forgot about that that'll make entertaining listening to all you listeners out there so we're going to call this the early years of Ollie Ollie, 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 Ollie. Yeah, anyways, moving on from that quick time. I've started a new channel. Yes, I wasn't meant to say anything, but I have. And I'm not telling any of you what it is just yet. It's me and the missus. Me and Mrs. Aim have started a channel. And it's a bit different to this. But if it picks up and it's worth it, then I will reveal the details. If not, then it'll just be lost in the ether somewhere. The misty, murky world of YouTube. Right, so, came back to what I was on about. What was on about? Yes. What the hell's that? Oh, yeah. The early years of Ole. Me. That's my baby. That's my. I'm Ole. Yeah. Right, guys. I'm going to go through some random stories I remember from my early years. Early years being like my earliest years I remember. Which was like two to like ten. And then the second video will be like the years, like teen years, like eleven to eighteen. And then we'll do the sort of early adult years, eighteen to thirty, and so on and so on. I can't really go past thirty because I'm only thirty four now. So eventually, in ten years, you'll get thirty to forty maybe. Right, let's get straight into this, guys. These are just random stories I wrote down. Um, right, so as kids, it's different to now. Like these days, I don't see kids playing out at all. I always play now. I was always out. Like I'd get back from school, like from like five years old, getting at three o'clock, half three, whatever the time was. Get my clothes on, my, my uniform, get some playing out clothes on. Mom, I'm going out. I was five years old. Where you going? I'm going to play my mates. Which mates? All the mates. I, I literally lived on a street that you went up in, and there was like a, a big house at the top, big wall, and cars I had to turn around at the top to come back down here. It's like a one way street. There's no way through, if you know what I mean. It's a cul de sac, as they call it. So, 
magazine, you could just be allowed to play it all day. We'd play at the top of the street with football, kicking it from one side to the other. We'd play um, Bulldog, we'd play um, so many different games, hide and seek, tracking. We did loads of great stuff. But during this time, I used to climb the wall, and this wall was bloody big. And at five years, I was like, I ain't ever get up there. I want to join the big kids up on that wall. And it was never going to happen. What the hell's going on here? So, guys, I've got the TV on here in the background. I was trying to see what's going on. Oh, it's Kaka. Oh, okay. Yeah, so I was like, I want to climb that wall. And I'm like, you're too small to climb the wall. You're like bloody five. But as I got older, I'd get a little bit higher, a little bit higher. And this was a neighbour's wall, for Christ's sake. And they'd have all these kids, they'd look out the window. Like, I want to look out our window. There might be a few birds sitting on the edge. When they look out of their window, they just saw like six kids sitting on the bloody wall. Or climbing off for the football. What a nuisance we must have been. So, but during this time, as a young kid, I had a habit of splitting my head open. Now that sounds like an odd thing to happen. It doesn't happen very often, does it? It did to me. One time I was in the playground at school. I was like six or seven. Just a little toddler. And there's this lad there in the year above me called Stephen Dixon. And he's a bit of a bit of an idiot. And he had a yo-yo. And not just any old yo-yo. It was like a metal one. A big clunky metal yo-yo. Back before they were popular. He was spinning it round on his finger. years old at this point. 
want something like that. So what do you mean? Slow down, just blood everywhere. Oh Christ, gotta call the bloody hospital now. And my mum didn't drive. And my dad was at work and taxis were so expensive back then. So we'd catch a bus to the hospital with blood pouring everywhere. Not good. One of my earliest memories, if I'm correct in thinking, was playing with some of Indian kids. And I was, I'm was i sure I was a bit of a bugger as a kid. I'm sure I kept taking my toys away from them. And there was these girls across the road, older girls than me. And I took my, cut my cars over, my little toy cars. And one of the bitches put my car down the drain. I don't know what the hell she thought she was doing. Another time we went out with them and their family. And they had a rubber dinghy. Yeah, rubber dinghy rabbits. If you've ever seen Four Lions, you'll know what I'm on about there. The film Four Lions, so good. Um, we're out on this lake on a rubber dinghy. I was like four years old. I cried and screamed the whole bloody way. Get me out. I will get out. <laughs> Wasn't good. And my dad nearly drowned me. I was in the swim baths. It's like you remember them. You know the memories you have. They're very fuzzy. But very real at the same time. Like you just think, oh, I'm sure that happened. I like, could be completely wrong. It might be completely like a different thing happened altogether but from what I remember I was like two or three years old I was in a swimming baths and I know it must be bollocks because in my dream or not in my dream, in my memory there was a bridge, you know I get bridges in swimming baths like a proper bridge and I was going like through the bridge in the pool and my dad was chatting to some bloke and I started like panicking and drowning I don't even know if that ever happened it's just a memory I have odd. My dad used to work at a hospital. He was a nurse, um, qualified nurse, quite high up. And he worked in this uh, hospital for the, the handicap. <laughs> and there's a couple of places he worked when I was a kid. And he used to take me with him. One of them, they had like a big soft play area for the residents. And I could go in and play for ages. Big, huge, like shiny, cushiony toy, um, like cushion things you could jump onto and throw about, they were fantastic, I'd been there for hours, but there was this bloke there called Billy, at this place where my dad worked, and he had no, he was an amputee, he had no legs, he was in a wheelchair, and Billy was funny, oh, doggy. charity day or something or other to raise money for this hospital I was pushing him along and I must have pushed either I must have hit a bump in the ground or I pushed him too fast I was like 6 years old I thought it was funny to push a man in a wheelchair quite fast and he thought it was funny as well but we hit a bump in the, in the field or the grass and the wheelchair toppled forward and poor Billy fell on the floor and he was laughing his head off and I was laughing my head off and we all thought it was hilarious well me and him did everyone else there didn't everyone was giving me looks like what the hell have you just done to Billy it's like, it wasn't my fault Billy was got faster so just little daft things when I was in primary school I um, we used to have big tubs of pain like big big ones at the back of the classroom by where I used to sit I don't know why I thought it'd be funny, but I thought I entertained the crap out of me, honestly did. I got a pencil, I think it's a the carbon and pencil, because it would have snapped. A compass, you remember, I never understood what that purpose then before, I still don't know. You get the compass, you put your pencil in, you stab the end of the compass into your paper and you draw a circle. Couldn't be arsed with it. So I got on these compasses when the teacher was out of the classroom. Quick stab of the uh, paint tub. About 10 seconds later, 10 stab holes in the paint tub. All you saw was paint pouring all down the side. I don't know how I thought I could get away with this, but I thought it was amazing. So, teacher goes out of the class again, I do it again. Teacher walks in the classroom as I'm doing this. What are you doing? <sighs> nothing, Mish. I promise you, I didn't do nothing. There's paint all over my hands, all down my trouser leg. Why are you putting holes in that paint? It wasn't me, miss. I, I swear down, there was just paint everywhere, all over me. And I'm there trying to deny it. Trying to get to the headmistress now. Miss Montgomery, or Mrs. Montgomery as our headmistress. And she was nice enough, even when she was angry with you, she was fairly nice. I used to 
of older kids. Like my next door neighbour was a girl who was a few years older than me. Her cousin lived next door to her and he was about two or three years older than me. And we'd all play football at the top of the street. Like I said before, the other neighbours, the selfish kids had this huge gate. If the ball went over, me being the smallest kid there and the skinniest, I had to crawl under the gate. All well and good. A year goes by. We only played in the summer like that. A year went by. And I had to crawl under the gate like when I was like a year older. I'd put on a bit of timber by then. Not much, just a little bit. I've now they lowered the gate. I got stuck halfway. I ain't kidding you. They had to come out. The neighbours did. Whose garden it was. Unbolt the, um, the brackets whatever on the gate and lift the gate up so I could squeeze back out. It's rather embarrassing. Then I decided it'd be fun one day to throw mud at my next door neighbour's window. Like, there's my house, there's his house. He was a lovely bloke, but I thought he was a bit odd because I was like seven. I'm a bit of a prat. Right next door, just like a wall dividing us. And somehow I thought I'd get away with lobbing mud up his window. Didn't work out at all. Another time, we used to have water fights. I, I mean, I don't think any of you really lived like I did as a kid in terms of how close we all were on the street, not just the kids, the adults as well. Um, if you did them, well, well done. I bet you had a great time. And all the neighbours were all mates and we all used to sit at barbecues, uh, stay out in the summer till God knows what time of night, all the kids playing, all the adults having a drink. It was, brilliant. It was absolutely fantastic. Um, I talked to my missus about that. We never did anything like that. I was like, well, you're missing out. Or you missed out, rather. And we had a huge water fight. Hose pipes, water guns and the lot. So I, I, I hate getting wet. I loved wetting everyone else. I hated getting wet myself as a little baby. I'd run in the house before anyone could get me. I went out this my This girl a couple of doors down caught me. One day she sold me. I was like, you cow. I was absolutely soaked. So I went and got a bucket of water. Now my mum and her mum were sitting in the garden chatting away. This girl went and hid behind her mum because she knew I couldn't get her. I threatened to do it. I threatened to do it. And this, her mum said, don't you dare do that to me. I was like, okay. And as soon as she said it, I was like, I dare. I thought I could get it over the mum's head and onto the daughter. Did not work. It went straight over the woman, over the woman, over the mother. She had a right got me. It was so bloody awkward. I think I was about eight years old when that happened. I've got to clear my throat, guys. Bear with me. Did any of you ever play an instrument in primary school? I did. Well, I say I played an instrument. I attempted to play an instrument. When I was in primary school, talking 20... Uh, 26 years ago. Freaking out, I'm old. Um, we had these things called recorders. Absolutely ridiculous instrument. It's like a little pipe. And you with holes on the top and you blow down and you move your fingers up and down. I could not get the hang of this thing at all. Other kids played it. So I was like, I want to play, mummy. Mummy, give me a recorder. So my mum bought me a recorder. And we had lessons at like lunchtime a couple of days a week. And the other kids could play. They were okay at playing. And I just could not get the hang of this at all. I was like, okay. Now, 
outside there, you get sent out, you break up at three, you know, at the end of the day, so three o'clock, I get sent out at ten to three, some days, so, okay, what kind of punishment is there, love, up to the teacher, I can now get my coat and my lunchbox, so I'm ready to go at three o'clock, whereas all the other kids have got to put away all their stuff, get, you know, be dismissed, go out, get their coat, get their lunchbox, I'm all ready to go. I used to think, well, that's not punishment, is it? But I would think, I've got an idea. Why don't we ring the bell early? So, you weren't allowed to ring the bell until three o'clock, and somebody you thought was great for you said, settled, told, look, Ollie, you can go ring the bell today. Like, wow, that's amazing. I'd go out there, though. Like, if I was sent out early, I thought, sod this, they don't mean class. Suits me, because you'd miss out on your milk as well if you got sent out that time of day. So I'd get the bell, ring, ring, ring. All the kids shoot up out of their chairs, pack all the stuff away. Teacher's looking at watch like, hang on, it's only ten to three. Like, Ollie! I go, no, not me, miss, I'm gone. I've already got my coat, my lunchbox. I'm out the door. See you later, alligator. Didn't go down well the next day, I'd get in so much trouble. Um, when did my ASMR triggers start? Okay, it goes back to my childhood. I didn't even know it, that's what it was. My mum used to um, work more, she used to be a carer, like a home help, go around helping elderly people out with cleaning and getting them ready, whatever it was. And she would work in the summer during the morning, like Monday to Friday, until about one o'clock. So I'd go to my grand's. Say this was like 
a 15 foot wall and we'd climb between the lot of us get to the top and over the other side and they had barns and they had sheds the lot would go in there for don't know why when I, when I was older and the house got sold for uh, renovations or whatever to, for all these properties to be built on there we broke in it, it, we thought it was empty nobody lived there anymore but there was like security living in there to keep it make sure nobody did what we did we absolutely shut our pants when we thought was the only people in there we heard somebody moving about absolutely licked it it was pitch black it was so scary but as kids it was just like adventures all the time grave rubbing who the hell came up with the idea of grave rubbing not robbing rubbing the idea being when you're young in primary school you'd go to a cemetery or a crematorium or whatever get a piece of paper put it on a gravestone a headstone and rub it with a pencil how disrespectful is it to have some little snotty nosed five year old standing on a grave rubbing a headstone I don't think they allow it anymore if they do then what the hell they're playing at but that's what we used to do looking back that is really back out of order um, toy day at school that was so exciting you can bring in a toy originally it was any toy electrical or not we just got older no electricals. Why? I want to bring in a chainsaw, an electric chainsaw, miss. You can't. You're not allowed. But why, miss? There was this lady called Miss Webster, or Mrs. Webster. Absolutely lovely lady. Not a proper teacher. But she'd take so many kids out of the class each day to, um, I just have it sit down in her little classroom. And we'd watch a bit of TV. There's a program called Geordie Racer about this kid, and he had a pigeon. I don't know what the hell the rest of it was about, but it's fantastic. And she'd read stories to us and stuff. Well, I was a bit of a shit, I'll be honest. And when I was like seven, there was this lad called Kieran, and he went out of the classroom with her. Now, I don't know why at seven years old I said this, but I did. I don't know where I got the idea from, but I did somehow. And I sat there and said, I bet they've gone to, I, I, bet, I might have said, maybe they've gone to have a kiss. Or maybe I said, I bet they've gone to have sex. I said something. And some little gob shot in our class, as soon as the teacher walked back in, told her what I'd said. And I was like, oh no, I'm in trouble now. And I was never once ever invited back there to that classroom. I was so disappointed because it's my favourite part of primary school. But it's my own fault for saying something so bloody stupid. Conkers. How good were... I mean, don't get me wrong, we used to search for them for ages. They'd be big conker trees. We'd all be climbing up or throwing sticks trying to get these conkers down. And the bigger you got, the better your foot was. Wow, look at the size of this conker. And that was never true. The biggest conkers were never the best. The little ones always seemed to win. But on a cold, bloody winter's day, or whatever time of year it was, I don't remember. If you, it was freezing cold, your hands were so hard turning blue. If you got hit by a conker on your finger when playing conkers. I was watching the Inter AC Milan game from last night. You knew about it. You wanted to knock your mate out if he hit you on the finger with a conker when your finger was freezing. What else happened? Oh, with the conkers. Yeah, my dad used to work at this hospital, like I said. Oh, Lukaku scored in the end. Of course he did. United could do that right now. We, um, he worked this, this hospital, and on the grounds, they had, like, a huge conquer trees. And it, not every day, but, like, once a week, he'd come back. I ain't even kidding you. I was, like, the envy of every kid on my street. He'd come out with two or three big carry bags full to the top of conkers. It turned out he'd gone out with the residents and said, look, because we're fun for you all to do. Like, oh, what's that? Come pick some conkers. And they'd just come pick up all these conkers for me. I can't believe it. Another part of being a kid was the computers. They were so crap when we were kids. You had something called a Spectrum, which was like a keyboard. It had a little tape cassette deck in the top right corner. You'd put this tape in there and then you'd watch it on your TV. Like you'd 
play the game on the TV. But I ain't kidding you. You would wait about two hours for the game to load. Then you'd play for two minutes. Then it'd crash. Then you'd wait for it to load for another two hours. You could go out and buddy catch a chicken, pluck it, make a chicken dinner in the time it took to play five minutes of the game. It was so slow. Then we had the Atari. Atari's were, were a lot better. We like the games like the Super Dead and other various crap on there. And then it was the Mega Drive. As a kid, primary school years, we had Mega Drives. They were they were badass. What if you played Sonic the Hedgehog? You'd get so far into it, you couldn't save the game. And then you'd have to, you'd die, you'd have to start all over again. Like these days, you kids don't know how easy you got with COD, Battlefield, bloody Fortnite. It's so easy. Everything's saved up in the cloud, isn't it? If your bloody Xbox or PlayStation crashes. But, all in all, I can't complain about my childhood. It was like the best time of my life, easily, bar none. Some kids don't have such a good time, but I had a great time. It was just so much easier. I lived about half an hour away, from, half an hour walk from a beach. So when I got a little bit older, about nine or ten, we'd go on bike rides to the beach, me and my friends. There was a big outdoor, I mean Morecambe, where I'm from, was like a small version of Blackpool back then. You had a huge outdoor swim baths. It was indoor and outdoor park. I mean, in the summer, all the kids would be outdoors. It, a big slide to the lot. You could go as kids because there's never any trouble with, you know, funny p- business going on or anything like that. There was a huge fairground called Frontierland. I mean, this was like, a, it was obviously smaller than Blackpool Pleasure Beach. But if you lived in the area on a Friday night and Saturday night, all the kids from your school would go on the to the f- fairground on all the rides you needed a few quid on a Saturday you might go and watch Mork and play at Christie Park which well, was a great ground but it was fun you get a bag of chips on the way out with your dad or whatever uh, there was bike rides there was lots of countryside around us I used to come bike rides from Grandad all the time every weekend we'd go here there and everywhere we'd ride for hours we'd sell for like 10 in the morning take a, some back lunch with us and Turn back up at like five, six o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, my granddad was like a gardener, window cleaner, everyday handyman. He'd do jobs like for people, for elderly people usually. And he'd say to me sometimes, Do you want to come with me? I was like, Yeah. I was like eight years old. And I'd go and help him on these jobs. I couldn't really do much, but he'd give me all the money. If he'd paid 50 quid, he'd give me 50 quid or 45 pounds. Like eight years old. I'm like, Wow. What's that for? So you helped me. So you did it all. So no, you helped me. It's like wow. Here good man my granddad is. Um he's lost me grand now, it's really sad. He was in hospital two days ago, uh, struggling to breathe. And when I spoke to him yesterday about his back home yesterday, he just broke down in tears. I'd seen like a, gr- a strong grown man like my granddad was when I was younger. So, yeah, I'm upset all the time. It's not nice. We used to go down to a river as well, and there'd be a big rope swing, and you'd swing off this rope into the middle of the river. I'll never do these days. Ain't it funny how brave you are as a kid, compared to as an adult? There's so much stuff, I'd just ride my bike like a bloody numpty as a kid. I didn't give a crap. Stand up, no hands, whatever, didn't care. Rope swings, hell yeah, climb a wall, damn right. As a kid, you just don't care what the hell dangers are around the corner. As an adult, forget that running. You have a laugh. Oh, Sean Wright Phillips on the TV. Um, ride a bike fast. Don't be stupid. Hold on with both hands. Go nice and slow. You gotta be safe. 